breaking overnight, severe storms leaving a path of destruction across Indiana, homes destroyed, people hurt, and three people in Sullivan, Indiana killed. The National Weather Service confirming at least one tornado overnight. From Sullivan to Whiteland, crews are now working to clean up damaged homes and businesses, and we have full team coverage this morning tracking the damage and the cleanup efforts. Our Matthew Fultz is in Johnson County and our John Duran in Sullivan County, where three people are dead this morning. We'll get to each of them in just a moment, but first let's check in with meteorologist Lindsay Monroe, who has been very busy overnight tracking these storms. And Lindsay, are the storms gone and what will we be seeing yeah. today? Yeah, we are now on the quiet side of the mm -hmm. storm system and we were just a part of a large storm system that brought several reports of tornadoes as well as wind damage from the mid south all throughout the Midwest. I wanted to start with those reports that came into the storm prediction center overnight. Even going back to yesterday afternoon, we had nearly 55 tornado reports, most of them concentrated down in the Mid-South as well as Southern Iowa and Central Illinois. And of course, uh, getting reports of that here in Central Indiana as well. So that's what we have been uh, monitoring, as you can see here overnight. And as far as the latest numbers, 55 tornado reports, 246 wind reports, a total of 460 across those two concentrated areas. Now, I did want to break down some of them that that we had seen here locally. Of course, the main one that we have been watching this coming in at 1024 yesterday evening, uh, where we did see uh, several uh, tornado related damage reports coming in near Sullivan. That same storm system tracked to portions of uh, Owen County, eventually into Morgan and Johnson counties, where we had several reports of downed trees, snapped power poles, as well as uh, homes being damaged as well along that track. We've been monitoring this storm system as it uh, really began yesterday evening. And as we flip back over to radar, this is around 8 o'clock yesterday evening, just before everything moved in. As we put this into motion, you can see the initial first warning started actually up in Bitten and White counties here in Indiana. And then just south of Terre Haute, you can see that crossed over the border and our first warnings down in Sullivan County happening just after 10 o'clock last night with those two main lines uh, impacting that the storm spot there as I was mentioning uh, where they're going to be doing some survey to see how exactly how strong those storms were. The National Weather Service will be out doing that today. And as of just before one o'clock early this morning, Sean and Angela were on air with you that entire time. That severe threat did come in to an end here in central Indiana. And as far as what we've got going on right now, we still have this wind advisory in effect that will be with us through six o'clock this evening. We're going to talk more about a more calm forecast that will set up for your weekend coming up in just a bit, Gina. We'll talk to you then, Lindsay. Thank you. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, Indiana State Police now confirming three people are dead in Sullivan, Indiana. This after all those severe storms and at least one tornado hit the area overnight. John Duran is live in Sullivan this morning. And John, this is probably where we've seen some of the most extensive damage. Good morning. Good morning, Gina. The sun is up for the first time, uh, bringing you here to Sullivan, Indiana. And uh, one word to describe it is eye-opening. Another is shocking because everywhere you look, there's destruction, debris, uh, is everywhere. I just want to give you a scope of, of what we've been looking up at since the sun has come up. I mean, roofs are ripped off. This is a church, this white building behind me, just to the left of it, behind it, you see a home and its roof is completely gone. Other significant damage to that house and then take you just behind that. And I, I can't even tell you what that is. It, it just looks like piles and piles of debris. However, we did speak with an emergency uh, responder who told us when the sun was down that that is the area where the tornado, the line it crossed from west to east, and that is where the most damage was to uh, homes that were absolutely leveled by this powerful storm and uh, obviously, as we mentioned, uh, causing three deaths as well. I'm going to take you right down this street. Power lines some down, some leaning. Uh, we, we saw some line workers here uh, when it was still dark out. They've since moved. There's still no power in this area. The wind is picking up. We've just started to uh, feel a bunch of these really strong gusts. And I want to also mention we are in a, uh, an emergency state.
All right, we had some technical difficulties there with John. We're going to check back in with him a uh, late, little later in the show, but really giving us those first pictures now that the sun has come up. want to show you uh, this backup from overnight in Whiteland. Indot crews tell us this was caused by storm damage, including an overturned semi. All lanes were closed on 65 North, uh, which stalled traffic for hours. Here's video sent in by one of our viewers who was stuck in this backup. This has since cleared. Uh, look at that. Just all just debris scattered all over the roads. So traffic is now moving as normal this morning. Whiteland was another area hit hard by those storms last night. Here's video of some of the damage. The sheriff asking anyone who does not live in Whiteland to avoid this area so emergency crews can do their job and continue to assist assess this damage. Our Matthew Fultz is there right now, uh, kind of staying away from kind of backed up from the scene. Matthew, what are you seeing there? Yeah, Gina, I can tell you that since the sun has now come up, this scene is unreal. We've now moved just about a mile east of Whiteland Community High School. Just debris, wood, everything, uh, shingles from pieces of shingles from the home and just complete devastation in this area. You can see to the left of me a small car lot had multiple cars damaged from winds uh, and, and other things from this severe storm weather. You can see right here what used to be a clear path street now completely blocked with trees, down trees. You can see crushing that car right there as well as more trees next to this home and just more damage as far as you can see to the left of me. I mean it's just like similar to what John said, just debris completely uh, scattered in the trees, tree lines, roofs lifted off of homes. I'm actually told by one neighbor that lived nearby, this is a local body shop that is now completely destroyed by this severe weather overnight. And within the last hour or so, we've been seeing dozens of people that live in this community come out, taking pictures, trying to assess this dam is just like everyone else. Emergency responders in this area have been making calls, making runs through this area. But as again, as the sun comes up, it's just an unreal scene here in Whiteland. The good news this morning, however, there have been no reported injuries in all of this. Again, we'll continue to stay out here all morning long and bring you updates right here on 13 Sunrise as well as our website, WTHR.com. Gina. All right, Matthew, giving us a look at that damage. Thank you, Matthew. And here's a look at Duke energy outages across Indiana. As you can see, tens of thousands of people are still without power across the state this morning. The highest numbers in Morgan County near Martinsville and Johnson County. Now we have reached out to both Duke and AES for a possible timeline on when service will be restored. Of course, they're very busy overnight working, trying to get that back up and running. We will let you know as soon as we hear back from them. And we want to make sure you know who to contact for help if you have any severe weather damage in your yard. If you live in Marion County, we have some information you'll want to write down. So here it is. If a tree is knocked down, IMPD's non-emergency line is 317-327-3811. Here's the email address you can use as well to report ponding in your yard. Just contact the Department of Public Works at dpwengineering at indy.gov. You can also call the Mayor's Action Center at 317 327 4622. And if you didn't get a chance to write it all down, don't worry, we do have all this information posted for you on our weather blog. We'll be right back with more continuing coverage of the storms.